years, the 16 countries spent over 4.7 years and received more than 10 training manuals of new and worldwide officers. She had also helped build the first TE mobile communication network in Beijing in 2009. Later, she had co founded a technology training service in Malaysia, which saw its profit tripling year on year. One of her latest adventure was co-authoring and publishing a book, Money Stories from Malaysia, which is an anthology of short stories on personal finance. Currently, she is a digital nomad with a nomad world and contributes regularly to the blog. Title for today is study.my, a case study of a Python outreach program. Study.my was an idea hatched to reach out to the public who are interested in learning Python to interview students with best practices in coding and the world of open source. We learned about consumer behaviors, the local market, and ethical, and had not, not expected before we got our hands on it. Okay, thank you, Ivy. Before I start, I have three confessions to make. Um, confession number one, I'm not a developer. And confession number two, it is intimidating to speak at a developer's conference when I'm not a developer. And the third one is, this is a failure story. <laughs> yes. It is. So, <laughs> all odds are against me. So, um, naturally, when human beings uh, feel threatened, um, it triggers the flight or fight response, right? So, yeah. But I have three problems. Um, the, the easier one would be to um, flight, just to run away and not stand up here. But, um, so, the first one, I've told my mother. Um, that I can't visit her this weekend and <laughs> to celebrate her birthday with her. And the second one, my husband just turned down um, an invitation to speak at Joker uh, Tech. Uh, the third one is that my colleagues uh, Kamal and Aman are here. So the whole company would know if I chicken out. <laughs> so that's why here I am. Okay. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, let's start. Um, I'm going to share with you about the story of uh, study.my. Um, that is the name of the project as well as the URL um, where we host the website. So, um, it's still live. We, we still put it out, although we are not working on this project at the moment. So, um, it's studi.my. Um, what we wanted to do with study.my is this. Um, I work for Zopso, as you know, so um, we um, build solutions with Python. So we want to give back to the community. And um, this is um, what we try to do to um, bridge the gap between the technical community and the newcomers. So people who want to learn Python from scratch new to programming, who have no experience, who don't know anything. So we wanted to cater a program for them. So um, this is the website where they will sign up. And when they sign up, because it's experimental, so we actually conducted a survey. We give them a set of questionnaires to answer because um, Although it's open source, um, it has to be self-sustainable because uh, we are we are we are trying to um, not not to make profit from the program, but we are also um, not uh, not sponsoring in a way. So we want it to break even at least. So um, when they sign up, they get a questionnaire through email. So um, we wanted to find out from the people who are interested to learn Python. <coughs> um, we asked them this question. 
So let me share with you the statistics that we collected from the questionnaire. So we asked them a few questions. Question number one was the reasons you're interested in learning Python. And um, the one that we got the highest response is blue color, the one that they say to prepare for future jobs, followed by yellow color, where they say it's for personal use, maybe they want to build uh, an app or a game or something. And uh, the green color is to use in their present job. And then we have got 20% who answered others. So um, they were given a text box to fill in. Um, so we get a few types of response. Um, one is uh, in the academic field, researchers or students trying to use it as a tool to build something to serve their purpose. And um, the other one would be for um, startups, startups that want to build a solution for the company. And the third type would be from students who want to um, learn it as a skill. So um, we asked this because we want to cater it for the audience. So we also wanted to know whether the people who are interested to come, whether they have any programming experience. So even if they don't know Python, have they learned any other language before? So we got a majority yes at uh, close to 60%, but slightly less, and the rest will be no. And we also asked about the age group. Um, the yellow color is 21 to 29 years old. Um, that's the highest, and the light blue color is 30 to 39 years old. So um, that's where most people are interested to learn language and then um, we also because we want to do it not as an online learning platform but face to face so um, we actually asked about the physical location <coughs> where they want to come to attend this uh, session so um, we have the the highest vote for Kuala Lumpur the green color so that's uh, more than 70% of the respondent. The rest will be blue color Malacca, yellow color Johor Bahru, and light blue Penang. Then the other two cities will be Kota Kinabalu and Kuching. So um, with this information, so we decided that our first session is going to be in KL. And also we wanted a little bit of background on their um, computer because we are going to ask them to do it on their own computer so majority was Windows okay and as you notice on every question um, the statistics that you see here all the questions have gathered uh, 113 responses and no one skipped the questions okay so um, very important, we also want to know what we wanted to teach them. So um, we asked what's the type of content that you're interested to learn. So um, most people voted for green, which is um, Python basic from the syntax and everything. Um, the blue color is intermediate, yellow color is advanced, light blue is uh, jungle and others um, others would be, we receive a few responses on um, AI and uh, machine learning. Okay, and then comes the last question, which is also the most sensitive question, at least in Asia. We ask them, how much are you willing to pay to attend a one-day course? So it's roughly seven hours. So as you can see, out of 113 respondents to skip they'll think uh, <laughs> yeah it's too sensitive I don't want to answer that but the, <laughs> the rest uh, 111 they um, voted for green which is up to 150 ringgit for the course and the second will be blue color up to 300 ringgit so with this 
um, input, we have come up with uh, a session, a date and time and a syllabus. And um, we publicized it. So uh, it was earlier this year, March um, 2019. And we put a price tag on the event. So it's uh, 250 ringgit um, just to cover the cost of renting the venue and paying the instructor for one day's work and um, mostly these two these two factors will cost us this much and um, we at this price we can start the class um, with only five head counts so we don't need a, a, a bigger group to start it but still it failed only one person signed up yes <laughs> So um, you might be thinking, your um, subscriber size is only 113, that's way too small to get the five head counts to actually make this happen, right? But um, to tell you the story behind the scene, uh, I, I will go to that uh, after I show you the material. Okay, so the material roughly looks like this. Um, what we want to do is to not just to teach them the syntax but also to share with them some of the practices like using code repositories, uh, what's Git and GitHub and so on. So um, that's where we put our um, material and Chi Yim helped us to um, build some of this. Some of you might know her. So um, this is how it looks like on uh, GitHub and the syllabus and the topics are roughly this. So um, for the beginning topic, we will cover introduction, data types, variables, flow control, function, string manipulation, and a brief summary all in one day. Okay. And um, some of the brief starting instruction, like installing things and getting started. Okay, so um, back to the story behind the scene. Um, if you think that 113 is a very, very small number to start working with, but actually it's not. Um, we actually run, ran a Facebook advertisement for a while, but um, it's no longer running now. So um, we have got two campaigns, um, left and right, the only difference is the image that was used so because we wanted to run an A-B split test testing. Okay, so from these two campaigns, this is the statistics you can see at the bottom there. Uh, image one has got 123,000 people reach and 2,400 link clicks. And for image two, we have got 80,000 people reach, which means uh, 80,000 people um, saw it on their phone or on their computer. And 2,000 actually click on that sign up link. And to add up from the two campaigns, that will be 203,000 people reach and 5,000 link clicks. So out of that 5,000 link clicks, um, 113 completed <coughs> that uh, survey form. Yeah. So if you think from all this, right, if we do the max, um, the conversion rate um, from 203,000 people, 5,000 click, so that's 2.5%. And um, out of 5,000 people who click, 113 sign up, that's 2.2%. And from the 113 people who sign up, one person registered, that's 0.9%. So that is very, very low. 2.5 and 2.2 .2 is normal because it's between 1% to 3%, right, usually in, in marketing. So that 0.9% makes us wonder what went wrong here. So. It's okay, we admit that it's a failed project, although um, my boss, Ying Bao, is a successful entrepreneur, and I was a trainer before, and I co-founded a 
training service that work, but this approach was something new to us because uh, when I was working in training, it's always B2B, business to business. So um, when you want to market training as B2C, directly to the end user, so it's, uh, it's quite different. Even though we try to use Facebook, which is con consumer centric, um, but it doesn't work as we expected. Yes, so um, so we try to scratch our head and do some post-mortem. So um, I narrow it down to four factors. Um, could it be the subscriber size being too small? 113 people is not enough. Uh, or could it be consumer behavior? Um, consumer behavior as in my friends are not signing up, so I, I feel um, unsure, even if I want to learn. Because we are talking about uh, aspiration. I want to learn Python. That's why they saw the advertisement. That's why they click. That's why they fill in the form and sign up. But uh, to really take the action to spend 250 ringgit and spend one day with us. So um, I, I, I uh, I'm not sure what uh, stops them or could it be our marketing was not aggressive enough um, like they don't see it um, when they're online all the time because we only did one uh, one campaign on one platform and it's not everywhere or could it be our material is not attractive enough because as I've shown you um, a few slides earlier it's all uh, strings of te text and um, some syntax but there's no diagram they feel lost maybe or could it be the money issue they think 250 ringgit is too risky to put in for one day they are not sure what they learn out of it okay so um can i ask you to participate if you are willing to um, so, so if you can get online, can you join this team? I think it's still active um, because my my laptop can't get online, so I use my mobile. So, if you try to connect to that URL and you enter the game team, then you can uh, maybe help me vote what you think is the reason. Um, so the URL is www.kahoot.it and the game team is 633816. Okay, I'm seeing 58 person go in. I'll just wait a few seconds more for more people to reach because I have only one question to ask you to input and um, I'll wait so you don't have to miss it. When I launch the game, you'll have only 20 seconds to answer. So I've got 17, 18, 19, and 20 players. Okay, I think we have enough to start now. Okay, let me just click start here so you can see that question. There is no right or wrong answer. It'll take a while to load. Just click what do you think is the most likely reason. And uh, after you click right, you might get a correct answer or wrong answer response. Just ignore that because uh, the, the platform requires me to preset a correct answer, but actually there's no correct answer. Question, does it load? No, it's just saying symbols. Yeah. Symbols? Yeah. There's no text? No. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Because, uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's my first attempt. Okay. I think I will show this. Uh, I'm connected, but it doesn't load. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, just really sense. Yeah. That's, that's much easier, but I want to capture the graphic, no, the graphic, <laughs> the data on graphic. 
so uh, yeah so the okay let me let me just try it again <coughs> Okay, um, okay, I will have to give you a new game theme for the new session. Let's just do one more try. If it, it doesn't work, then we'll just raise hands, right? Okay. Okay, so I'll wait a few seconds for players to join. Okay, we have got 17. Anyone need a few more seconds? 18, 19, 21. Okay, um, okay, let me start. Shift. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that because mine is uh, loading with the text with the question. Okay, I think okay. Red color is subs red color is the first one. Subscriber size too small, and blue is consumer behavior. Yellow is materials not attractive, and green is workshop fees not affordable. Oh, okay, but I've got some statistics here. Um, eight people voted for workshop fees, that's the highest. Four voted for materials, uh, second highest. And third will be consumer behavior, uh, uh, three votes, and two votes for subscriber size too small. So most people think it's the fees. Ah okay, so ah okay, so you just click without the the the, the label. Ah okay, so okay, let's just yeah. <laughs> okay, um, subscriber size too small. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six people think so. Six votes. And how about consumer behavior? One, two, three, four, five, six, also six. Uh, material not attractive, one. Okay. And how about workshop fees? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep. Okay, so it's the fees, right? Okay. Um, so what what do you what do you think is the fees? Or let's say if we reduce it to a hundred and fifty ringgit, do you think it's still the fees? No, that's that's affordable enough. It's still the fees. Ah, okay. The value proposition. So, uh, in Malaysia, I think it's two and a half years, and we've done only part of open workshops. Uh, there have been cycling workshops that have been part of also, and usually we charge the same one, right? That includes lunch and dinner. So price sensitivity is definitely there in the market. Um, on the other stuff, like uh, consumer behavior, I'll just handle that part. Uh, I think the herd mentality is uh, definitely lesser because there are folks, a lot of folks actually want to learn. Um, we and that kind of uh, uh, 
try to subscribe a part. Usually workshops over here run by other communities like Gemino Code and uh, um, we have um, a data council. A data council is also here. Uh, not data council, sorry. Uh, School of data. Yes, <laughs> sorry. So uh, they do workshops and get sold up in a day, two days. Right? And uh, usually you get 50 finance and you get another 20, 18 days. Mm. Right? That's normal. And I've been doing this uh, especially in the last uh, like maybe 18 months. And so definitely it's not the first two. Um, fees is definitely less uh, because uh, we're still quite sensitive. It'll take some time. Um, but definitely what's going to happen is eventually you reach a point where people are going to be able to pay more. That's one. Or you're actually doing a very advanced workshop where people are saying, okay, I already know the basics, but I'm ready to pay a little bit more for more advanced stuff. And that's what I've seen experience in the industry. So, um, Okay, that's good. Uh, so, uh, my name is Yashak. I ran the Kuala Lumpur School of AI. Uh, so, uh, there's, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of people signing up. So, I limit the class to uh, maybe a couple of people sign up. But uh, only like 60 people show up. If I do more, then you will get a few more people. So, uh, what yeah, the workshop fees I think is because when you do Python 101, people still just want to learn. And when they just want to learn, there is no um, business value yet. Mm. You know? Like if I want to if I want to spend two hundred ringgit, um, then and I don't know if I'm gonna get a job or not. It's like so venturing into an unknown. Yes, yes. And two hundred fifty is not very small for a kid. So mm -hmm. that's why I think but if you do something like machine learning or network 101, they might, people who attend might be working. So then you can charge 250 or something, even more, and people will come. But for an introductory level, I don't think that uh, 100 or 150 would be, I don't think they would, they would catch any people because they are just still uh, investigating, seeing if they want, if they need it or not. Okay, thank you very much for sharing. We want to uh, we want to share this our story so that we can hear from more people your feedback and your experience in the field and um, what what the general public wants. But then um, we base this uh, we decided on this scope based on the survey and because. Uh, by then we set the objectives is to reach out to new newcomers. So uh, it's a, a little bit different there, the, the, the positioning. So, um, but mm, please. There's an interesting thing about Python and that is learning the language is not really as important as what you can do with the language and the libraries that are within the language. So the amount of beginner Python that you need to know in order to be productive is actually relatively low compared to other languages. So I would say venture into, you know, what can I do with Python? You know, what value does it bring to my life? Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anyone would like to share their perspective? Okay, uh, my name is Elisa. So, so I'm working at the University of Korea. So, so about the Python, uh, well, we can see that uh, why people don't subscribe to your workshop. So, so first of all, student nowadays are very addicted. They can find courses that are free. Mm. <laughs> so that is one thing that uh, we have to bear in mind. Eh? So for example, if you see today, udemy.com, okay, so uh, that is uh, technically they offer some very cheap or very free, even the basic version. So that is one thing that you have to do as an out of box of study, actually. And also, even nowadays, kids are very, what we call it, high key, like a phone, have a phone and everything. Even in your phone, you can learn Python. 
is in town and hall. This building can see that. Uh, this um, will be work eventually move to the more older people that uh, that space that we see. So it's uh, uh, a pretty good system uh, of viewing space that if you want to also get into the history of something, you have to see it from everybody, not just to see it with our eyes, but you can easily obtain it online to see it wherever, even the country offices also be even see it at this moment. But that's by all the online sources. So maybe you have to uh, see what uh, I want to get a better. If you want to start a workshop, what uh, you have to survey what is the industry that you need, for example. Maybe AI is something you need it here, but the place to study maybe not all machine learning, maybe also one of the three, but again, how much you study the music, okay? So that is the thing that maybe you can uh, see and uh, assess about the future. Thank you very much. And Aman? Uh, <laughs> right. Um, so, so, yeah, so this is one. So, just my two cents. I think if you want to ask, I mean, I agree with you. The, with the lady that said that there must be a specific solution, why, what, what, what you can do with Python. So the, the title would have been like, build your own shape tunnel to Python from zero, from like, like from scratch, from zero to, to build a shape Mm, that's right. Okay, thank you, Aman, for sharing. Okay. There's a lot of points. I'm sorry, I think to do a panel just on this one. <laughs> <We're running out laughs> <of time. laughs> because I have, I have a lot of stuff I can do. That, that's my last slide, so don't worry. Just let them. Yeah. Uh, in terms of doing workshops, right, uh, we have we have seen um, over here, especially on the value proposition, I guess a lot of folks have been talking about value proposition. Um, and just for, before that, just going to the detail of things, uh, so we have conducted uh, study camps before over here, of course, you know, doing, uh, doing that before this year. And what we noticed when we got in touch with the students and whether they were college students, whether they were people who were just entering the workforce or even, you know, temporary students, or I keep telling them, you, if you want to learn XYZ, you already have YouTube videos. And the first thing they say is, we don't have the discipline. Right? We actually are not able to sit and go through all of these courses. I have bought a lot of courses and be like, tell me how many of you have actually finished the video <laughs> <laughs> Only one, right? Okay, how many have you finished 10? Yeah, I have, I have 20 in my library. I finished two of them. So the thing is, it's, it's sometimes having uh, a physical uh, you know, gathering people together, sitting and working really helps. So definitely having a physical uh, workshop really helps, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. uh, on the value proposition part, uh, again, it depends, right? So um, it depends on, uh, I would say, like an amalgamation of all the answers. Again, personal opinion, uh, it seems that uh, uh, you need to take uh, certain niches to certain markets, like, okay, college students, they would be interested in building the next social media network. You take uh, folks who are working in the health industry, they would want to actually do something in uh, data science engineering, right? Uh, using Python. And uh, maybe uh, you, you take folks from, um, I don't know, like a digital agency, they would want to build their app. So each and every niche has a certain has a certain requirement in it. And I kind of noticed this, especially in School of AI. So School of value proposition has been that you can start doing data engineering one on one. A lot of people come in because data engineering is new. I've heard data science, I've heard ML, and I've heard AI, I don't know what to do. But give it a, bit, a year or two, and then you'll start seeing that there are lesser people because data engineering just becomes a norm. 
right? And then they would have to start specializing. They would have to start saying, okay, travel industry. If there are folks who are interested in like you know flight related data, you know, let's do a job for that. Let's do a workshop for that. People will come. So this is where I'm, I'm seeing. So if we need to like mix and match with both, uh, definitely having an introduction uh, maybe uh, will help, but it should be uh, uh, what do you call it? Free. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, but paying for maybe like I want to learn Django so that I can build the next, you know, multi-billionaire unicorn. Yeah, why not? Right? I'm getting prepared just to see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have got the new benchmark uh, figure, 50 ringgit, right? Okay, so um, thank you very much for sharing your um, perspectives and uh, thank you for being with us. So um, that's the end of my talk. So um, thank you and see you tomorrow. <laughs>